The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. As we return to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour, what do we have? Well, it doesn't really matter as long as you're here, though. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we had earnings out uh, after the bell last night uh, and this morning. And uh, you try to get a theme starting to come out, and that is big tech continues to do rather well. We also have uh, a thing where many of the other companies that are more brick and mortar or depend on uh, the kind of uh, things uh, that are going up in price, um, like Starbucks, um, and it's a little better than it was out here, but um, it was down a couple of bucks. Eh, still, I guess it is, still is. Uh, you've got some other ones out there that are doing rather poorly. But the big companies uh, like uh, Google uh, coming out with uh, a, a 20 to 1 split, or is it a 19 to 1 split, uh, did try to attempt to break through the previous high, 3,019.33 from November 19th. Uh, wow, not that long ago, uh, with 4.3 million shares here today. And kind of interesting that they're finally getting uh, to the point where they want to do a reverse split on this. One of the reasons why a, a company that would do a reverse split is they think that uh, retail buyers don't like to buy $4,000 stocks, and that's or 3000 and that's true. Uh, but they did that for a long time, and the reason why is they didn't want shorts piling on on a variety of times in the marketplace. Uh, $50 stocks, much easier to get people to pile on. But, uh, you know, the big companies are getting bigger. Uh, other companies uh, having bigger problems. Uh, PayPal is the loser of the day. PYPL, right? Uh, P-Y, P-L. Uh, yep, uh, that is it. Right back into the gap. It goes back a little bit farther. Uh, when we look at PayPal, uh, it was going after this big, huge gap that goes back to May 7th of 2020. That was a huge day up on 35 and a half million shares. Uh, let's see what we have uh, today. Uh, t -t 101 million shares and hanging out at the lows. Uh, whatever they said, which I didn't pay a lot of attention to, I was looking at all the stocks moving after the bell last night, certainly looks uh, like it's going to blow through that. Um, you've got a double gap right at about 99 bucks. And that's still another 30, 35 bucks lower. Um, so I don't know what they said that was that bad. I'll look at it tonight. But uh, certainly does look uh, on just a chart basis as one that has finally blown out. Um, you did have a very good double top that told you to get out. Not just sort of told you to get out, but run and get the hell out now. Uh, that was the double top from February 16th, 2021, that had 13.6 million shares uh, to going into that high on 4 million shares. You gapped down. You had three or four different times to come down. Uh, but what you do have on this, on the positive side, is the last in a three-gap play. Your first gap out here was on the down on the 28th of uh, what is that uh july 2021 you get your next one down here at uh november 9th 
Um, and that's another huge gap down. And as I said before, if you get two big gaps, now this one was filled a little bit uh, that came off the top. You get a big gap like that. And can you go back up and test? Sometimes. I wouldn't have bet on it because of the low volume uh, high out here. But what you do get is you get two gaps. The chances of getting a third gap of something equal, which was like, uh, what, 25, 30 bucks on this. Um, I sent out my white paper to a lot of people, if we've got some new listeners that are trying to figure out what the three gap play is. Generally, this is what you, uh, what you think about. And that is if you get one big gap, and I mean like not like a 2% gap down. I'm talking about things that stand out that a blind man could see. And these gap downs were that. They were 20, 30 bucks, uh, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%, not 2%. There's a lot of tinier gaps out here that get filled. Now, on this one, though, you filled a gap and you came down in the third gap. Could you get worse? You probably can, but my guess is it's going to consolidate a little while here. Uh, but uh, generally, um, the thought is on three gap plays to the upside, they can come back and fill all three gaps rather quickly. Uh, to the downside, you don't tend to get that same kind of effect. You do tend to get a temporary bottom. So if you were looking at this, you could almost put a stop in of 15 or 50 cents uh, on the low of the day here and hang out for it uh, for a bounce up to about 172 or 3. Um, I don't like that. I think there are better plays out there, but uh, that is the proverbial three gaps. You get two gaps. Uh, like I said, I bet about 80% of the time that you're going to get a third gap. You don't know exactly where it's going to come from, but a pretty high probability. 877-927-6648. If you have questions on the three-gap play or you want me to uh, email you that white paper, just uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. If you'd like to call in, 877-927-6648. Uh, that was it. Anything else? Uh, yes, I did see that. Forbes is getting bought by the Chinese uh, in kind of a round, round robin way. So I don't know, uh, you know, it is one of the bigger premier uh, financial newspapers or magazines or whatever you want to call it now that it's online, blogs. Uh, but yeah, the Chinese uh, communist uh, adjunct are going to add, I think they're going to own 80 or was it 85% of that. So the question is, uh, will they be able to objectively now that they're owned by the Chinese Communist military, uh, going to be able to uh, have kind of a uh, objective view? We shall see. It hasn't worked out well in the past, is all I can say. But yeah, I did see that. So uh, yeah, another one of our premier uh, financial news sources. Highly compromised, to say the least. Anyway, we'll be back uh, in just a minute to give you a call, 877-927-6648, path at tfnn.com if you want the uh, three gap play thing. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Had a, a little back and forth with one of the subscribers today uh, who is shorting Netflix. Um, certainly, you got about halfway through that gap, so I could see, uh, and the volume, yeah, a little better than the day before. Uh, today, a little better of a reversal. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of pointing out what is a, sort of a sea change, and that is every day in my newsletter, I do point out uh, the most highly shorted stocks the day before. Uh, Netflix was number one, and it's pretty rare because uh, they love to short the living daylights out of both NVIDIA and AMD on a, base, on a daily basis. We'll get to AMD and their earnings report here shortly. But uh, Netflix, very interesting that it was the most uh, heavily shorted uh, uh, medium and big cap stock in the market. Um, the difference, uh, last five years, any kind of huge shorting like that would have seen uh, the people taken out to the wood shed and uh, thoroughly thrashed uh, for even suggesting that a stock could go lower. Uh, today, um, yeah, kind of a nice little move lower. Um, I'm still kind of thinking 570, uh, 475. Maybe they go after these shorts one more time, but uh, it is interesting as we went through on Monday. It was Monday or Tuesday. Monday uh, and Tuesday, or Tuesday, we went through uh, the most highly shorted stocks. And even though the markets have been significantly higher, those uh, short positions, uh, not most of them not whole household names, uh, but refused to really bounce in the past, those also tended to do extremely well. So we've got a market that, at least on the edges, is changing, and that is that if you got a lot of short shares, it isn't the auto automatic ticket to going higher. Uh, but that's it. Um, okay. Yeah, got some emails. I'm going to answer that one at the break for you, James. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, or no, yeah. Or Vic. Um <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, I'll I, fish. I'll answer that one uh, during the break. I don't want to get people too roused up about it. Uh, anyway, uh, 
heavy shorting, not always the ticket to hire. Now, on that list, of course, uh, AMD and NVIDIA are almost a daily uh, pop of uh, people heavily shorting. Uh, AMD o opened up around 130. It's kind of pulled back a little bit, but it still had a fairly significant move off of 110. And uh, is this just a bounce higher in a downtrend? This is certainly kind of what you get. Um, the downside is generally you want to have a company that at the same time looks like a downtrend is also talking about a downtrend in its business. Uh, as we said yesterday before earnings, this is a company that could ship four times as much stuff as they can and would sell every bit of it. So it's a it's a it's not a demand problem. It's a supply and production problem from AMD. They did a little bit better. It is kind of interesting that it did sell back a little bit. Uh, again, uh, overall uh, bearishness in the market has not been erased. Um, I do think that maybe we have the opportunity. I don't know. I'm going to wait for it. But I think we have the opportunity for a high in this bounce in the next, I'm going to say, uh, well, between now and the close and tomorrow and 1 o'clock to have some kind of high come in. Uh, I think at least the timing on that is going to have to be uh, based on Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm is back pushing the highs. It's hard to think that they're going to do poorly. Certainly, uh, the results from GLW, Coring, uh, and uh, Apple suggest that Qualcomm is going to do well. They continue to have basically a huge moat of patents and products. Uh, Apple trying to get around that. Uh, they do not like paying anybody anything, uh, which reminds me of uh, the same thing of Walmart, always trying to screw somebody over for a penny or two on anything they can because it's such vast numbers. Uh, but uh, Qualcomm, you know, they set up a business. Uh, they have more patents than just about anybody but IBM, and they vigorously defend them, but not everywhere. It's not a shotgun approach like IBM. It is uh, that, and they have the uh, best engineers in what is uh, what a lot of engineers call the black arts, and that is radio frequency. Uh, digital stuff, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, I've come compared uh, the ability of Qualcomm's engineers uh, to Dale Earnhardt at uh, the uh, Indiana or at the uh, Daytona 500 and that is some people just can see things uh, visually Dale Earnhardt could see the wind and the way it moved on different cars and why he won the 500 so well or so many times uh, it was uh, that and you, you can't always teach it Sometimes it's partly acquired, but a lot of it is just innate ability uh, to see things um, like that. And Qualcomm has been probably uh, as, uh, as uh, I wouldn't say vicious, but uh, determined to hire the best out of college for people that understand this stuff, kind of like Oracle is the uh, company that goes out and hires anybody in computer science that understands database stuff. Um, a lot of these people go after the best and the brightest, uh, get them, pay them a lot, and nurture them to become one day a uh, somebody that can do that. And of course, some fall off on the on the way there. But there is a kind of a black art. Uh, to radio frequency stuff. It bounces around. It's weird. Uh, digits are easy. I kind of did that stuff. Uh, analog is much harder, and the one step below that is radio frequency stuff. I think they've done a very good job. On 5G, uh, there was a lot made about the FAA and the uh, 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 and uh, the uh, no, who are the frequency people? Now I'm just having a mental blank. Uh, but anyway, the FAA and the, uh, what is it? Not the SEC. 
I'm 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 figuring out my all my uh, acronyms now. The radio folks, anyway. Uh, the uh, certainly, you know, the whole thing was that 5G was going to mess up everything. Yeah, FCC. Thanks. I don't know why. Just uh, got all my acronyms all uh, mixed up there. Anyway, uh, right now, as it stands, 92% of all airports have been cleared for 5G, and that's a big deal for Qualcomm. You still have 8%, but they're doing about 2% uh, of uh, per day of what's left. So 5G does look good. Uh, they've got basically a virtual monopoly. My guess is that Apple will try to get into a war on it again with them. Um, but uh, in the past, Qualcomm has won. Uh, it may take five years, but they continue to win. We'll be back in a minute. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, uh, yes, I'll get to that. Up 30 points on the S&P cash, up 158 on the Dow NASDAQ, up 24 you know, when you saw Google bounce like that, um, you got to think, man, the NASDAQ was going to be up 500 points today. It's up 24.25. Does look like they kind of front ran or ran that entire thing. Uh, resistance uh, on the S&P really starts to come in at uh, uh, 45.50. 
We're about 26 points above that. Uh, this is uh, going to be probably the fourth day of declining volume. And uh, fund buying really kind of is 90% done. You might have some in the morning. That's why it's a little foggy on whether or not I think we're going to have a top yet today or tomorrow. But uh, generally... Uh, if you get a 1.5% on average bounce for the fund buying, which is the last two days of the month and the first three, um, but, uh, you know, you get about a half percent off of that on average the a couple of days following. It. So there is kind of a, a mad rush to get uh, the prices as high as possible by those guys on Wall Street, the big men of Wall Street, uh, only to see that you get a little bit of a pullback just on average. I don't know on this one. I just think that really uh, the volume so far today kind of pulling back a bit. So we'll keep an eye on it. We want to watch how the uh, end of the day comes in. Do we need to see another crowd uh, forming uh, to try to buy uh, the end here? Um, but, yeah. Uh, it always makes me nervous to see these days around fund buying uh, where everybody tries to buy the high of the day. It doesn't seem like they're giving the IRA people a very good uh, shake of the, uh, of the uh, what do they call it? Good shake? I guess it's just a shake, right? Anyway, 877-927-6648. Uh, okay. Uh, to, to, oh, what else do we want to look at? I wanted to look at uh, others. Uh, we've got Metamucil, uh, otherwise known as Facebook, uh, out after the bell tonight. Uh, they're back up into their gap. Uh, volume's okay. Uh, you have to probably think that if Google's earnings were okay on search, that Facebook's are probably going to be okay. I don't know if they're going to blow out as well as Google did. Um they have lost a little bit. In fact, um, Apple's change in policy uh, on what uh, Facebook can surf off of Apple uh, iPhones has been a big hit to them. One of the reasons they're off that 384 high is that it did cause a big problem and a continuing problem. Uh, the idea, though, that I can't answer but probably will be answered on tonight's earnings certainly is you know, did Facebook find a way uh, to to make back those uh, those earnings? And it's very unclear if they did. But if they haven't been able to do it by now, I think that it's probably a pretty good indication that Apple uh, does move lower. If they have found a way to make money, uh, even though with the embargo of the data that, at least from Apple's point of view, they stole against uh, the contract they signed uh, becomes problematic. And, of course, uh, pretty much at the, uh, the height of this was last earnings cycle when Facebook, uh, Zuckerberg, and uh, uh, Steve, uh, I want to say Steve Case, but it's not, um, the Apple CEO got in a war of words. And so that is kind of one of those things where you have to say, yeah, um, this could really go either way. If it goes higher, I don't know if it goes that much higher. Uh, but uh, if they have kind of a, a ongoing systemic problem that they can't make make back. Now, one of the big problems that you see from Facebook's point of view was that they were getting a ton more money uh, and monetizing a lot more what people did on their phones than what they did at their desktops. Uh, people don't tend to uh, do as much on that. And, of course, Facebook was uh, surfing uh, and siphoning off their location data so that they could uh, modify ads targeted at the customer. Now that they can't go in there through the back door, uh, the only thing I, I wonder about is why Apple didn't sue them for a ton of money uh, in behest of their customers. But... Uh, you know, this is one that could go either way. You got to think that no matter what happens, the people that are long-term investors in Facebook are going to put some lipstick on this pig. Well, let's put some lipstick on this pig. Certainly some lipstick on this pig. 
Uh, but you know, if you if you dis disregarded earnings, it did pretty much what you would think, which is go up there and fill about half the gap, and then that's it. And the volume hasn't been all that exciting off the lows. So on balance, a little weaker than uh, Google's charts, at least the way I looked at them. Uh, and of course, uh, maybe some big guys thinking it's time to you know they've held this thing since it was twenty bucks. Maybe it's time to take a little bit. It's uh you know off uh, 384. They've got some problems, and then of course uh, by midsummer they're going to be knee deep in antitrust lawsuits that actually make itself make themselves to the court, uh, and those are just going to get worse. There's what. I think eight different lawsuits. The big one that everybody worries about, of course, is the one that could uh, have the same kind of impact that Microsoft's did uh, in 1999, and that's one day you got a 30% haircut. I think it was 30%. I think it was 1999. Uh, it took a little while for them to come back, and of course, almost 10, 12 years to actually start moving back higher. Uh, so antitrust things aren't... Uh, uh, aren't uh, just that. Now, did I do a little bit of history? I didn't. Let's get this in, and then when we come back, we'll look at some more charts. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1935, Mr. Keeler, Leon, Le Leonard E. Keeler, co-inventor of the polygraph machine, first uses his invention. Keeler used the lie detector on two criminals in Wisconsin who were later convicted of assault when the lie detector's uh, results were introduced in court. Of course, this was thrown out a couple years later when you found out that it was all a scam. Polygraph machines don't work. Um, they tend to use them uh, as uh, a way to make people uh, nervous and actually uh, uh, confess. And I always uh, think it's very interesting. Everybody, I, I, I imagine literally everybody has been told to watch The Wire, uh, the series uh, from, what is it, HBO series? I think it was, uh, about Baltimore in the 2000s. Great series, but I always remember one time where they uh, talked to some kid to put his hand on a copier and told him it was a lie detector test. And of course, the kid uh, instantly starts uh, confessing all his ill deeds. Well, no better than that. We'll be back after this. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And all those folks that uh, love trading natural gas, well, they can worship another small rodent again today. It is Groundhog Day. Once again, the eyes of the nation have turned here to this tiny village in western Pennsylvania. Blah, 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 blah. There is no way that this winter is ever going to end as long as this groundhog keeps seeing his shadow. I don't see any other way out. He's got to be stopped. And I have to stop him. Yep, don't drive angry. Remember that, too. 877-927-6648. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, several people here that asked for the three-gap play. I'll get to that uh, in the next break. 877-927-6648. Uh, path at TFNN.com. Uh, okay. Uh, so I wanted to get to AMD. I did look at them. Um, got a nice bounce. Just a question on the on the uh, side of uh, what this thing's doing. Is it a bounce and a downtrend? The only thing you have now is that semis are kind of at a discount. Worried about the China factor uh, in Taiwan. 80% of uh, all electronic devices... Uh, have to depend on uh, dependency on something that comes from Taiwan. So it is problematic. I don't know what the discount is now uh, for that, but uh, literally advanced micro, NVIDIA, uh, to a certain extent, uh, all the hardware that Microsoft makes. Uh, Samsung, probably the only independent uh, manufacturer that doesn't really rely on anything uh, from Taiwan. And there's a couple of things, but uh, kind of the, the fortress mentality that Japan had in the 90s, uh, South Korea has uh, developed for itself. So if they're going to make something and sell something, uh, it, it's probably going to be made there if it, at all possible. They try to make sure and whether or not it's the chips that actually go on their own smartphones that normally would be made in Taiwan, uh, they make them there. You know, the, I guess the biggest thing is the ASML uh, lithography machines are the only thing that really is a 100% monopoly these days. That's still good. I haven't looked at that company for a while. Let's take a quick look. Okay. Yeah, and of course these guys are down because uh, no one wants uh, them to sell uh, where they have is probably in the neighborhood of a five billion dollar order uh, for those machines to China. They still wouldn't probably be able to deliver them for a couple of years. But uh, that's kind of you know, that's kind of it. You're back up here. It's what they can build. A um, lot more orders than that, but. The lead time on this stuff is amazing. 
Uh, one of the more interesting thing with ASML is that they have a giant mirror in there. That mirror is concave. Uh, it's also about uh, three foot in diameter. And if you listen to the AS, uh, ASML uh, uh, engineers, they're pretty proud because that mirror actually comes from Zeiss, the uh, optic manufacturer from Germany. And that mirror is so perfect that if they blew it up to the size of the, uh, of the uh, earth, that's a three-foot dish. If they blew that up, the, the farthest part out would not be any more than a human hair. And when you talk about the absolute kind of precision that this takes, uh, ASML has a lot of it, but uh, the uh, Zeiss, Zeus, Zeiss, I think it's Zeiss, uh, the German manufacturer of optics, also a big winner in this stuff. I don't think they tried trade by themselves, but man, there are a few things that are almost perfect in the ever made perfect, but uh, the optics in these machines are literally amazing and of course the next round of machines coming out are going to be 300 million dollars a piece but that's it how high dave um i'm more about which time it is and i'm thinking that is in the next like i said probably before noon tomorrow we see whatever the high is but uh, that would be the end of fun buying uh you know we've got a handful of stocks that are probably going to do well uh People are focusing on them, mostly because they're in the NASDAQ. But certainly, they're dragging a lot of the other companies with them. But we are pretty much through the ones that are going to be that big a deal. Now, tomorrow, uh, as we said earlier, uh, it may be the ones that have real bad hair days. Uh, one of the other reasons why I think tomorrow could uh, be signaling some real problems. And that is that we get real heavy in the biotechs tomorrow, a um, little bit more in the energy sector, which could help and offset it. But uh, if there's a sector that looks weak, it certainly is the uh, vaccine industrial complex as represented by the IBB. Uh, you got almost no volume out here, but uh, really starts tomorrow. We'll go through those and eh, we're not gonna have time today. But uh, we'll go through them uh, tomorrow after they report. But certainly, uh, let's go ahead and talk about them. Uh, at least give you the uh, tickers so that we know what those are. It's, uh, Thursday morning. Okay. Uh, Merck, Lilly, Biogen. Uh, on the energy side, we have ConocoPhillips. Uh, eh, Ralph Lauren. I don't think that's going to do much. Uh, after the bell tomorrow night, we've got Amazon, Snap, and Pins. Uh, Amazon's kind of disappointed the last couple of times. Um, I don't know if the new CEO has decided that it's uh, time to, to uh, quit throwing in uh, all and getting rid of all the uh, skeletons in the closet that Bezos left. But that's kind of it. Ford Motor, Activision, Blizzard. Eh. I'm wondering if, with all the acquisition stuff, if it if it's hard for those to actually go down, even if they do miss. Uh, another reading on uh, smartphones uh, with Skyworks Solutions tomorrow night. Uh, we've got uh, Skechers and Deckers both in the, uh, what would you call it, footwear or a tennis shoe business? I don't know what that's called. But uh, certainly we've got a little bit of that. And the big Mac daddy of all safety stocks at least what people said for years uh clorox uh and everybody the rush in these to go back uh into the safety stocks doesn't look like many people are worried about safety out here in clorox today but uh eh. I mean, you got that double gap at 155.11 i wouldn't be surprised to see that continue down a little bit but, uh, you know, the Procter & Gamble's, the Clorox's, the stuff that people ran for safety, uh, even just a, a few weeks ago, doesn't look much like they're uh, worried about any safety anymore. And uh, complacency is always the key setting at another high in the markets. Be back in the
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we had a little more questions about PayPal, free gap play. Generally, you get a fairly quick uh, filling of the third gap. If it's going to happen, you're going to see it start literally tomorrow uh, and going and filling that gap back up. But doesn't mean that uh, it's not like the ones on the way up um, where they get filled real quick. Uh, the ones on the way down tend to take a while, but they do. So, you know, long term, uh, if it can hold this 129, you don't want to give it any more. Like I said, if uh, the pattern, the first part of the pattern is you get two big, huge gaps. Uh, and then you get a third one that generally is more volume. It's everything. It does mean that you have, as we've talked uh, against or through last week, a, uh, a uh, selling climax most of the time. And then you get, a, uh, at least on these downsides, you get a fill. On the upside, you get the thing falling apart almost instantly. And that's what that uh, three-gap play white paper I have has. So uh, if there's one thing that you learned today, it's to be aware of two giant gaps, the third one out there about 80% of the time. And, you know, that if you don't want to get blown out, that's one of the easiest things to watch on a daily basis. As I said, uh, looking at uh, looking at what we've got here, I'm 
everything's setting up fairly right. Uh, as I said, thinking that maybe we get a nice pop today on or tonight after the bell on Qualcomm, maybe get a little bit more in the morning on the open. Uh, and then uh, when those uh, biotechs come in, if they are weak, I think that takes us through the real strength of the market. I thought maybe even the techs would be a little weaker than they were this uh, this time. They were a little stronger. But we're getting into the probably the war, weak part of earnings, the earnings cycle. Well, so when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.